men of Yam House. They're on tour right now. Go to their social media for dates and times. Welcome back. Well, when it's cold outside, nothing beats a warm, hearty bowl of soup. Right, Steph? That's right, Jace. <laughs> We're helping you step up your soup game today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show with some of her favorite soup tips and recipes. The woman dubbed the soup queen by her family, the queen herself, her majesty, Stephanie Hansen. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Friends. Should I curtsy? I did a little. Yeah, I'll curtsy. There we go. Yeah. There we go. The soup, all kidding aside, I called you that in our promos. Yeah. But your family really does call you the soup queen? My family, my friends, my radio show. I actually counted over the weekend and I did the work for anyone that's interested in soups. I compiled 13 of my original recipes in one post about soups. Really? Yes. And it, I did it just for you. Okay, because you know. Stephanie, you know, Minnesota, you all, Wisconsin, have always loved her. Stephanie is huge in Seattle, and our Seattle, the viewers in our Washington station love you. And they're new, they're new, so I did like, I, if you're doing stock pot soups, if you're doing instant pot soups, if you're doing crock pot soups, because we just yeah. got out of Crocktober. Yeah, <laughs> we sure did. Okay, so we're going to, this in this segment, we're going to do your tips, and I okay. have a list here. Shall all we right. go down them? Sure. Uh, well, and you're making roasted tomato basil soup. That's I, what we have there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is delicious. It is delicious, and you can make it with cream or without. So if you're a dairy free person, okay. Uh, I, it is with roasted tomatoes that I do it, but you can also do it with canned. So okay. I kind of have the recipe for both ways. Okay. Let's go through your tips. Okay. Different ways to cook. And you, did, you just said this stove, instant pot. Yeah. So. Soups, some of, so you have a stock pot, which okay. is on the stove. You have a crock pot, which is the eight hour slow cooker, or you have the instant pot, which is the pressure cooker and also has a slow cooker function. And most of these recipes can be interchanged, but I kind of identified like this is, a, this is made for the stove top, how I've designed it. This is a crock pot, this is an instant pot. And again, some of these recipes, it just depends on what you have and how creative you want to get. Generally speaking, what is your favorite for quality? What do you find? You are the soup queen. Yeah, it, it used to be the crock pot. I really love my crock pot, but my instant pot has kind of moved my crock pot to the side. I still have it. I'm not getting rid of it, even though there is an inst a crock pot feature on the instant pot, because I'm too weird about that. I need like both things. But I think the instant pot is quick. It's fast. The flavor's good. And you can get soup on the table instead of like, you know, some recipes, it's 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Anybody got time for that unless you're like at some cold, cozy cabin or it's yeah, the new year. Nobody has time for no. that. Next tip, keep stock in a bag in the freezer. Okay, so this is my legit bag from home. I call it the stock bag. Notice there's no stock in there. It's just vegetable scraps. Also, when I eat chicken, I put the bones in here. When we prepare chicken, I pull off the skin or the gizzards or any of that stuff goes in this bag. And when the bag gets full, I put it in my Instant Pot for 35 minutes and I make my own stock. So I always have chicken or vegetable stock ready if I want to make soup. And wow. it makes a better soup. You know, some stocks are good, but some aren't so good. They're just $3 worth of water and salt. So I find that this just, you know, it, I feel ecological. I make my own. And you keep that in the refrigerator, obviously. I keep it in the freezer. In the fr That's right, in the yeah. freezer. And so anytime I'm cutting something, even like tomatoes, mushrooms, whatever, I just, cucumbers, doesn't matter. Throw it in the bag, and when the bag is full, I make stock. Okay, I love that. Yeah, and I it's love that. super handy. Okay, next, use mason jars for storage. Okay, this is the tip that you're all going to leave the show being like, oh, I never even thought about that. So here's the thing. I love those thing. moments. This is a quart. This quart is four cups of soup, which is perfect for two, right? The smaller ones that are the pints are two cups of soup, which is perfect for one. So I started putting soups in the pint jars and then bringing it to work. And by lunchtime, it was pretty thawed out. And I could just throw it in the microwave and eat right out of the jar. I just love storing soups in mason jars. I like giving soup in mason jars. And you're wondering like, oh my gosh, can you freeze those? <laughs> yes, you can, And friends. they sound just like that That's when they ask Minnesota that question. That's my Minnesota accent that half sounds like me. You leave about an inch and a half worth of what we call headroom so that when the soup expands at freezing, it doesn't crack the jar. Okay. 
more brothy soups need less headroom. If you have a lot of beans and chunky things in there, you want to give it a little bit more. And I will tell you, in all my years of freezing soups, yeah. I've probably had like six jars crack. Sometimes they get old and they can't handle the, the, the temperature change. But even if they crack, they just like crack down the half and you just throw that one away. Like it's not like you're gonna get injured or it's shattering or anything. Because the, the room at the top, I know my mother had an aha moment with mm -hmm. that because she's like, she didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Okay. And it's just a really inexpensive way. Tupperware is expensive. Some people like to store soup flat in plastic Ziploc bags, but then reheating it's kind of a pain because what do you put it in? It's a giant square brick. Okay, really quick, in this segment, let's just do this one and we'll finish on the other side. Use soup as a gift. Yes. I just give soups for when people have babies, when people get married, when someone's done something nice for me. I have a little craft tag and I'll just write pea soup, I'll tie it around the top. I can't tell you, people really appreciate like homemade things and yeah. they like that it's quick and easy. If you're not having a great day, I'll bring you some soup. I had one person during the pandemic, he almost cried. He hadn't seen anyone in like six months. And I knocked on his door and handed him some soup. I don't think he'll ever forget it, and nor will I, so I keep doing it. Before we answer folks' question. questions, what else do you want to say about your delicious tomato basil? Okay, I think tomato basil is like the easiest soup in the world. You can roast your Roma tomatoes, like I've talked about on the show before, how you roast them low and slow, and then you blend everything up. You can add some cream, you add basil. That can be soup in and of itself. If you just have like cans of tomato, you put a, a one onion, you saute it, four cloves of garlic, two cans of crushed tomatoes, and some chicken stock. And then you blend up basil in there, about uh, two cups. It's, I have the recipe online. but So that is a dairy-free version of tomato soup. If you want to add some cream, which this has cream in it, I like to add cream to everything because yeah. it tastes delicious, then you add cream. But it, I think roasted tomato soup or tomato soup is one of the easiest soups to make. Can you, Steve, can you take that shot again? Can we just acknowledge, I love it that the woman on your apron is perfectly located, like right, look at. <laughs> on my stomach? I just want to say, it looks like she's Hello, like, hey, friends. look like, at this look tomato at basil dancing. soup. <laughs> she's really going to town. It's kind of my Dio de los Muertos apron. It's just fitting out of Halloween. So, you know, was that a little too much that I just belly danced on you're, the show? You're never too much. Okay. You know. Photographer Eric loved it, and that's all that matters. Yes. Hey, yes. you want to answer some questions? Sure. Okay. Soup questions? On our Facebook page, we gave you the chance to ask Stephanie some soup-related questions. First up, Cindy. Cindy asks, how long is soup good for after you make it, if just kept in the refrigerator, not freezing it? Oh, Cindy. I mean, I'm no, like, health expert, but <laughs> I eat things until they smell bad and you just use your nose. So there is no real guide. It's like, does it smell good? It's good, eat it. She eats things until it smells bad. That's right. And Back to you, Chuck. And when it smells bad, you get rid of it. This will be on John Oliver yeah, before you probably. know it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, don't, she's not a doctor. Don't listen to that and sue said, us, no, okay? I'm yeah, not, I mean, I just. I'm not a Fauci. Look at, look at, the, look at the labels. Yeah. yeah. Kay, let's go before the lawsuits come in. Um, Kay writes, uh, what's the best way to freeze soup? Can you freeze soup that are cream-based or coconut milk-based? That's, that's interesting. Yes, Kay, you can. And use the mason jar method. Inch and a half of headroom. A little less if it's all liquid. A little more if there's a lot of solids. But yes, you can freeze them. And I've had soups in my freezer for over a year, but... I'm, I'm also a freezer person. Someday we should do a segment on my freezers at home. They're kind of a lot. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> we'll send photographer Eric there immediately. <laughs> and we'll make him eat all the stuff in your freezer. Yeah, all the old stuff. Is it healthy, we'll call it. Yeah. Uh, uh, next, Thelma. Hi, Thelma. She has a question about cooking soup. Thelma writes, do you prefer simmering on the stove slow cooker or instant pot? So it kind of depends. If I'm doing vegetable soups, I think the instant pot and the slow cooker. If I'm doing like tough meat, like you're doing like a beefy soup or a, a brothy soup, I would probably go for slow cooker because you want more time for that to break down. Or the instant pot for beans. I mean, you can make beans from dried in 45 minutes in the instant pot. You can have like black bean soup. So you can do it on a weeknight. 
It's very quick. I yeah, mean, it totally is... quick. It, beans and the Instant Pot is a game changer. Finally, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Kelly wants to know if you have any low sodium soup recipes that you like to make on your website. Do you have any? I do. Like, how about my zucchini curry soup? There's no salt in curry, so this is just chicken broth, zucchini, and literally curry. There's no cream or anything. It's delicious. Uh, pumpkin soup. You know, when you're making your own, you only put in as much salt as you want. And if you are using prepared broth, you can use a low sodium broth or Make your own broth and don't put any salt in it, this, and you can control everything. This people are going to do this. Yes. I know they're going to do My this. My stock bag. Uh, all of you have all these recipes on your website. I do. Right? I put it into one post. You're Thirteen so nice. of them. You're so nice. For all of Stephanie's soup tips and recipes, check out her website right there at the bottom of your screen, stephaniesdish.com, and we'll of course post this a little bit later. Be patient on our Jason Show Facebook page. We'll be back right after this. Those are all from the freezer. We'll have Eric eat it later.